My dear Sabina, it was strictly forbidden to preach to other prisoners. It was understood that whoever was caught doing this received a severe beating. A number of us decided to pay the price for the privilege of preaching, so we accepted the communist terms. It was a deal. We preached, and they beat us. We were happy preaching, they were happy beating us. So everyone was happy. Warren Brand was born in 1909 in Romania. He grew up and was taught under a Marxist and atheistic system. And he grew to hate even the idea of God, considering the idea harmful to people in society. He had a deep bitterness towards religion. Later in life, he met and married a woman named Sabina. She herself did not believe in Jesus either. At that same time, an old carpenter in a village high up in the mountains was praying that God would send him someone he could lead to Christ. Something drew Wormbrand to that village. Romania had 12,000 villages, but yet he was drawn to that specific one, the one with the old carpenter. Wormbrand describes that old carpenter courting him as though a beautiful girl had never been courted before. Both Richard and his wife Sabina became followers of Jesus. He became a pastor and started a church in Romania. For him, he said to preach the gospel was heaven on earth. It was what he was meant to do and he loved to do it. He got disciple making and for him, he knew his life's work was to lead people to Jesus. He said, Every soul won for Christ must be made to be a soul winner. The problem was, it got him into trouble. Under the reign of the Nazis, he was arrested and beaten, but eventually released. As the communists came to power, they brought together all the Christian churches and their representatives. There were 4,000 pastors, priests, and bishops all gathered together in the parliament of Romania. These men were representatives of the church, and they chose Joseph Stalin as the honorary president of that congress. At the same time, Stalin was the president of the World Movement of the Godless and a mass murderer of Christians. One after another, bishops and pastors arose and declared that communism and Christianity are fundamentally the same and could coexist. One minister after another said words of praise towards communism and assured the new government of the loyalty of the church. Richard and his wife Sabina were present at this congress, and Sabina told him, Richard, stand up and wash away this shame from the face of Christ. They are spitting in his face. If I do so, you will lose your husband. I don't wish to have a coward as a husband. Then Richard arose and spoke to the congress, praising not the murderers of Christians, but Jesus Christ, stating that their loyalty is due to him first. These speeches at this Congress were broadcast around the whole country and everyone could hear him proclaim Jesus Christ from the Communist Parliament. Eventually, Wormbrand was kidnapped by secret police and arrested, and he spent 14 years in prison. Along with thousands of other Christians, he was tortured in so many ways that was incredibly hard for him to even think back on them. I was led to a prison which is 30 feet beneath the earth. And for years I was kept there in solitary confinement. For years we were kept, everyone alone in a cell. Never have we seen sun, moon, stars. Never have we seen a man except the interrogators who beat and tortured. Never have we had a book, never a bit of paper, when after many years I had to write again, I did not remember how to write a capital D. And now, in this absolute solitude, we could experience if Christianity is true or not. Another pastor with Wormbrand was tortured with red-hot pokers and knives. He was beaten very badly, and then starving rats were driven into his cell through a large pipe. He was forced to stand for two weeks, day and night. The communists wished to compel him to betray his fellow Christians, but he resisted. Eventually, they brought his 14-year-old son to the prison, and they began to whip him in front of his father, saying that they would continue to beat him until the pastor said what they wished him to say. The pastor lasted as long as he could, and then he cried to his son. Please! Stop, Alexander. 
I must say what they want. I can't bear your beating anymore. Father, don't do me the injustice of having a traitor as a parent. Withstand. If they kill me, I will die with the words, Jesus and my fatherland. This is the kind of faith that Christian heroes in the past have left as an example for us. They never surrendered their faith, and in their suffering, God did something beautiful. For Wormbrand, during this time in prison under the communists, they broke four vertebrae in his back and many other bones. They carved him in over a dozen places, and they burned and they cut 18 holes into his body. Wormbrand said that somehow God gave him the strength to remain faithful, all the while being able to preach the gospel, even winning over many of the communists who were responsible for his torture. Wormbrand talks about the peace that would come over Christians during their suffering and how they would often sing and even at times dance for joy because of God's supernatural provision for them. This is a heavenly perspective that should shift everything for us. It changed everything for them. Only love can change the communist and the terrorist. A flower, if you bruise it under your feet, will reward you by giving you its perfume. Likewise, Christians tortured by the communists rewarded their torturers by love. We brought many of our jailers to Christ, and we are dominated by one desire, to give the communists who have made us suffer the best we have, the salvation that comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the peace that Jesus was talking about. This is the love that he demonstrated for us, that despite us rebelling against him, despite those who put him to death, Jesus doesn't take revenge. Rather, he offers forgiveness and new life, true freedom. How do we treat those who have hurt us today? We are called to run the race that God has set before us, and to do that well, we need to strengthen our faith. What does that mean? It means that we need to build spiritual muscle now that will sustain us should persecution and suffering come. The enemy is the father of lies and lives based on lies. Only the truth and the truth of God's word brings forth true freedom. We must strengthen ourselves and our faith, and here are a couple of ideas of how to do that. Start by devouring your Bible. God has given it to you so that you may know him, and in it lies everything we need for life and godliness. Richard Wormbrand tells a story of villagers who saved up to buy an old Bible. And when he gave them a brand new Bible, they were overjoyed with it because they had spent the winter working to save up for it. They took that Bible back to their village and they cut it into 30 different pieces so that every home in that village could have just a tiny bit of God's word. Do we value it like they do? Parents, we need to recognize that all education comes from a worldview. Nothing is neutral. Wormbrand described how in his day, the underground church put leaflets saying, let us join together our efforts and prayers to dedicate to God the lives of our children from the time they are in the cradle. Let us save our children from the influence of the world. What do you need to do today to lead your children to truth? Wormbrand said, persecution has always produced a better Christian and I think that preparing for it will do the same. There are many other ways we can strengthen our faith, but what about preparing ourselves and others? Prepare your family that what we have known historically here in the States may not be what our children and grandchildren will get to know. Around the world, Christians have historically prepared their families to undergo persecution. We don't know what is down the road for us, but what we do know is that God has given us a race to run, and we need to strengthen and prepare ourselves and others no matter what that race looks like. And we must remember those who are suffering even in this very day for Christ. Let us be people who stand for truth. Let us be people who speak boldly for the truth of the gospel because it is the only way that people can be saved. There is only one name under heaven given by which men shall be saved, and that name is Jesus Christ. Let us love well. Let us point people to Jesus. Let us always be about the joy of the gospel because sharing the gospel really is, like Wormbrand said, heaven on earth. Let us be a people who declare that our hope is in God and what comes in all that we do. Christ be magnified in our lives. He is what we want people to see when they look at us. He is our hope in our life.